It's MK and I am here for another 31 days of cut files with MK and Janet. And this is the cut file that I'm going to be using today. I was so super excited to be using this one. I have some tools by some assemblage required. Um, the masking is still on these, so I'll have to pull that off of the tools that I choose to use. I am also going to try to be using up some of these stickers that I brought in for uh, another layout and completely forgot about them. So why not? Um, I also have a film strip by 49 and market in toast color, some few, uh, minte pieces, uh, left over from the garage collection. I'm really trying to use that up. And then I have this photo here of tools from the blacksmith shop in Austin, Nevada. And then from three different sets of thickers, I came up with the world tools of the and trade. Um, I know that the top one is a Vicky Booten. The um, of and the I got at a give take table from Janet and I don't remember the glittery black ones. And then by Cartabella, I have by the sea, this gorgeous wood grain. So I am going to be using this wood grain here and um, a scrap of close to my heart cardstock in, I think it was lint color. I don't know. It's it's like a really pastel gray brown. <laughs> I don't even know what color that is. Um, but I did flip it over to use the lighter side of it so it's not so grayish. Um, and I wanted really a, a white border around it. Uh, I'm going to grunge up my little uh, minte circle. And then I think I'm also going to grunge up the tag as well. Now today we are back in Austin. And we are actually at the museum. Now these are uh, photos. Uh, well, this is a photo of leftover bits and pieces from the blacksmith shop that used to be in Austin. Now, back in the day, uh, I love saying that, by the way, back in the day, Austin used to be like a hub for um, miners. I mean, it, it was so big that um, the Stokes Castle was made, you know, like um, the, the big wig that opened up the mine moved every brick and stone over there to build himself a quote unquote castle. Um, so, and it was three stories tall. And I know I've talked about Stokes before, um, but it was three stories tall so he could oversee his mining development. That That is, well, and it was like a summer house, which, yeah, it, there's no such thing. Uh, and not in Nevada, <laughs> but he built it as a summer house for his family as well. So he would bring his family up. Um, he had a workshop and everything in it. But in and amongst um, some of the memories that are in um, Austin is the buildings that are no more. And what I mean by that is this one in particular is the blacksmith um, shop. And the blacksmith shop was called Parrot and Macomb. I don't know where the parrot comes from because they don't talk a whole lot about um, parrot or Perot. I'm not really sure exactly how they, they say it. They just usually talk about Joseph Macomb, who was the master blacksmith. Um, it talks about uh, the, the little poster there off to the right uh, in my photo. Um, talks about, you know, um, that it was built in, eight, in the 1880s and that um, it was used um, for basically everything that the town of Austin needed. Uh, they needed fences built. They needed um, machinery built, um, agri agricultural items, wagon wheels, tools, and, and anything fixed. Um, you know, this, is, this was the happening place to go was this black, blacksmith shop. Well, um, after several years, actually, um, it says here, actually in 1890, so he only did it for 10 years, um, Macomb retired and moved back to North Dakota where he is from and um, started a blacksmith shop over there for a, a couple more years. Um, but what they did in Austin was they tore the blacksmith building down. It no longer exists. And it doesn't say exactly when um, they tore it down. Um, but right now, the Austin Clinic, medical clinic, sits on top of where the blacksmith is, uh, blacksmith shop is, which I think is actually pretty cool to know that. Um, I, I just, I find it fascinating how towns grow and buildings are no longer there. I see it all the time with um, Elko. Like I remember this corner here and that corner there used to have a little shack on it. And, you know, they sold little taquitos out of it and all that stuff. I mean, I absolutely love 
driving down 12th Street and, and remembering that little sh shack, which is now just a gravel corner yard, you know, that they have done nothing to it. Um, but, you know, I bet the shack was, um, you know, incompatible and dangerous and going to fall down and instead of it falling on somebody, you know what I mean? It's, it's just one of those things. Uh, so yeah, it, I just think it's pretty cool. But in case you guys don't know what a blacksmith did back in the day, it says here that uh, a blacksmith would forge items out of wrought iron and steel by getting the steel soft from being heated in a large fire. Then the steel was bent and shaped in shaped by using tools and hammers to create other tools, horseshoes, or anything that was needed to be created, which I think is pretty cool. I think blacksmithery, or however you want to call that, is a dying art. Now, I see it all the time. People are still making swords and, and axes and things like that um, for fun. But in all honesty, you know, I, I just honestly think that uh, blacksmithing is a, a trade that is fading away. It's It's um, it's pretty sad. We had a conversation, we being, you know, me and, and a couple friends had a conversation about, you know, where we see ourselves in 10 years and where will we see, will we still have hands-on electricians, hands-on, um, mechanics, hands-on welders? Will we still have those? Uh, because a lot of the, uh, car manufacturers are going to those automatronic arms and stuff for the welding and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty sad that, um, some of these hands-on, uh, jobs that we had or have are, are dying arts, you know? Um, and, and yeah, it does make me sad. It's, it's nostalgic for me kind of. All right. So I'm going to finish this layout off with a little bit of rips and tears. And then I'm taking this Tim Holtz paper, um, that I just had for a scrap and I'm going to put it behind it to give it a little bit of contrast. Um, because I've got those dark of the letters and nothing else really matches those letters. And so I really wanted to bring something to the layout that brought that in and, and helped um, with those letters and helped take attention off of those letters. I usually don't use of and the so big. I really like my tiny tile alphas for those um, adjoining words or whatever kind of words you want to call them. I'm not an English major. That is for sure. Um but yeah, I usually use tiny little tile alphas or um, the, the smallest little thickers that they make, those types of things. And um, because I had them, this, these <laughs> in my stash for, um, you know, from Janet and they were in my little bag of, I must use these first. Uh, I want to try to get through all of these, uh, you know, in 2023 uh, because I clearly don't use them. <laughs> <laughs> so because they were in there, I wanted to use them. Um, and yes, they are super, super huge, but uh, they actually go really well with, uh, with the title. And I really like mixing and matching my alphas. That is for sure. So anyways, I am just going to finish off scuffing up and trimming out one more little rip because I like things in threes. Uh, and just going to go ahead and you know, uh, run some tape around it. I do end up backing these with washi tape. I just don't share that with you guys. Uh, and that is pretty much my layout. It came together uber super fast. Like it was all the things were made for this layout type of thing. Um, and, and I love it when product does this. I love it when, um, I can, I can lay product down and, I A, use everything up, and B, it just all meshes really well together. Like, how, I, how come I can't do that on every layout? I don't know. But again, ha, here I am, <laughs> finishing another layout for the 31 days of cut files. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around and uh, listening to me ramble yet again. I absolutely love doing layouts like this, you guys. They are my favorite. Um, and I, I feel like I'm running out of these photos. So we need to do another little adventure. Uh, that is for sure. All right, you guys, uh, please be sure to check out the two links down below. I have one for the 31 days of cut file YouTube playlist, and then one for the Facebook group. Um, I apologize that I have not been doing any lives over there. Like I wanted to, um, my home life has gotten away from me like uber, uber bad, um, but hopefully I will get on there sometime this week. I promise to do a live of some sort because I have to, you know, 
um, do some things over on the Facebook group. Uh, so anyways, also to be sure to check out Janet Fritz's channel, who is Galaxy Girl Creations here on YouTube and uh, see what she is doing because she has been playing along with me all month long. I also want to give a shout out to a few gals. Um, Ginger Bush, uh, who is Ginger's Corner here on YouTube, has been playing with me all month long as well. I also have um, Helen, Helen Ding. Is that how you say it? She is uh, Helen Ding here on YouTube as well. Her all their play all their videos are in the playlist. But then go and check out their channel and hit subscribe so that way they get them. And last but not least, I've got the Scrapping Nerd, which that's an adorable name. She has been playing along with me last year and this year, and I am just thrilled. I really am. So thank you all so much for uh, you know just making this year, making this 31 days of cut files, just absolutely fascinating. I love it. All right, you guys, again, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.